Little Fox. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, Chapter One: The Cyclone. Dorothy lived on a farm in Kansas with her aunt Em and Uncle Henry. Her aunt and uncle were hardworking and quiet. They spent all their time working, so they had no time to play with Dorothy. Dorothy would have been lonely if it weren't for her dog Toto. One day, Dorothy and Toto stopped playing, and Aunt Em and Uncle Henry stopped working. They all looked at the sky. Dorothy didn't like what she saw. Across the field, the sky was the color of night. Suddenly, a flash of lightning split the darkness, and the wind began to howl. A cyclone is coming," said Uncle Henry. "I'll help the animals. Em, you and Dorothy go to the storm cellar." Toto jumped out of Dorothy's arms, ran into the house, and hid under a bed. Aunt Em ran to the storm cellar, but Dorothy ran after Toto. The house shook violently and then began to spin. The house shook again, and the spinning stopped. Holding Toto in her arms. Dorothy looked out the window. She was amazed by what she saw. The boring, colorless landscape of Kansas had been replaced with flowers, fountains, and brightly colored birds. Strange, tiny people were running toward the house. Outside, an old woman approached Dorothy and bowed. "You're a great hero," said the woman. We thank you for killing the wicked witch of the east. The Munchkins are free. The other people cheered, but Dorothy was confused. I haven't killed anyone, she said fearfully. Well, your house did, said the old woman. And the result is the same. The Munchkins are free. Oh dear! cried Dorothy. The house fell on her. Who was she? She was the wicked witch of the east," said the woman, "and the Munchkins were her slaves. Are you a Munchkin?" asked Dorothy. "Oh no, I am the good witch of the north. I came because I heard the wicked witch was dead. Where I come from," said Dorothy, "all witches are dead. That doesn't surprise me," said the good witch. If houses often fall from the sky, not even the Great Oz could survive. The Great Oz? Asked Dorothy. Yes, the Wizard of Oz. Answered the Good Witch. He is the most powerful wizard in the land. Dorothy was about to ask something when the Munchkins all gave a sudden shout. The body of the wicked witch was gone. Only her silver shoes were left. These shoes are yours now," said the good witch. "They are magical, but I do not know what they do. Can they take me back to Kansas?" said Dorothy. "Maybe," said the good witch. "But you should ask the Wizard of Oz." "Where does he live?" asked Dorothy. "He lives in the Emerald City," said the good witch. It's a long journey, but easy if you follow the yellow brick road. The yellow brick road," said Dorothy. "Yes," answered the good witch. "It begins over there and goes right to the Emerald City." "Will you come with me?" asked Dorothy hopefully. "No, I cannot," said the good witch. "But I will give you a kiss." My kiss will protect you. No one will harm you. Well, no one except maybe the wicked witch of the west. The wicked witch of the west," said Dorothy, puzzled. "Yes, you must be careful of her," said the good witch. Dorothy had many questions, but the good witch kissed her on the forehead just then. Dorothy could feel the magic enveloping her body. Goodbye, good luck, and remember, stay on the yellow brick road," said the good witch. 
Toto gave a loud bark as the good witch suddenly disappeared. Well, Toto, said Dorothy, I guess we should pack and then follow the yellow brick road. She put some food in her picnic basket and then locked the door to her house. Come along, Toto. It's time to go see the wizard. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz Chapter 2 The Scarecrow Dorothy followed the yellow brick road all afternoon, and then she wondered where she would sleep for the night. Not far ahead she saw a small munchkin village, but all the houses seemed empty. When she came to the last and biggest house in the village, she understood why. Everyone in the village was there. All the munchkins knew who Dorothy was. She was famous, and Bach, the host, was very happy to have her as a guest. You killed the Wicked Witch of the East. You must be a powerful witch, Bach said to Dorothy. I am not a witch, replied Dorothy. I am an ordinary girl. Girl or witch, said Bach, you can stay at my house. In the morning, Dorothy said goodbye and continued down the yellow brick road. She hadn't walked far when she came to a cornfield. In the cornfield was a scarecrow. As Dorothy looked at the scarecrow, she thought she saw it blink its eyes. Impossible, thought Dorothy. Then the scarecrow smiled and nodded its head. Curious, Dorothy went over to the scarecrow. Good day, said the scarecrow. Did you speak? asked Dorothy. Yes, answered the scarecrow. How are you? I'm fine, replied Dorothy. And you? I'm not well, said the scarecrow. I'm stuck to this pole. Can you help me? Straw men are very light, so Dorothy was able to easily lift him from the pole. Thank you, said the scarecrow. I feel better now. You're welcome said Dorothy. Who are you? asked the scarecrow. And where are you going? My name is Dorothy, and I'm going to the Emerald City to see the Wizard of Oz. Where is the Emerald City, and who is Oz? asked the scarecrow. Don't you know? Dorothy asked in surprise. No, I don't know anything, answered the scarecrow sadly. My head is made of straw, so I have no brain. Oh, said Dorothy, I'm sorry to hear that. Oz is a great wizard. Do you think Oz could give me a brain? Asked the Scarecrow hopefully. I don't know, said Dorothy. But come with me and we will ask him together. I'm scared to go and see the wizard alone. Are you scared? Oh, I'm not afraid, answered the Scarecrow. I'll tell you a secret. There is only one thing in the world that I am afraid of. A farmer who made you? Interrupted Dorothy. Oh no, said the Scarecrow. I'm afraid of fire. Let's not talk about fire and scary things, said Dorothy. Tell me a story. Me? Exclaimed the Scarecrow. My life has been too short. I was made only two days ago. Why don't you tell me about the place you are from? Dorothy told the Scarecrow about her aunt and uncle and their farm in Kansas. She was very sad. Why are you sad? Asked the Scarecrow. You said Kansas is dull and boring. Why do you want to go back? Because, my brainless friend, there's no place like home, said Dorothy, weeping. Shall we spend the night over there? Asked the Scarecrow, pointing to a cottage. Okay, said Dorothy. The next morning when Dorothy woke up, she said, I need water. Why do you need water? Asked the Scarecrow. I need water to wash my face and to drink with breakfast, she replied. Being alive sounds inconvenient, said the Scarecrow. You need to sleep, wash, eat, and drink. But you have a brain, and I'd do anything for a brain. 
Behind the cottage, they found a clear spring. Dorothy realized she didn't have much bread left, so she was glad her friend didn't eat. After breakfast, Dorothy was startled to hear what sounded like a low groan. The noise came from the forest nearby. Wh what was that? asked Dorothy fearfully. I don't know, said the scarecrow. But we should go look. Someone may be hurt. They heard another low groan. Look! shouted Dorothy. What's that through the trees? They entered the forest and were amazed at what they saw. A man, made of tin and holding an axe, stood frozen, as if he was about to chop a tree. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz Chapter 3 The Tin Man Dorothy and the Scarecrow were amazed. Standing in the forest was a man made of tin. Did you groan? asked Dorothy. Yes, the Tin Man answered sadly. I have been groaning for over a year. You are the first to hear me. How can we help you? asked Dorothy softly because his voice sounded so sad. Oil, oil my joints, said the Tin Man. They are rusted. I cannot move them. Sir, I have no oil. I only have bread in my basket, said Dorothy. There's an oil can in my cottage, said the Tin Man. Get it, and you can make me better. Dorothy ran to the cottage and brought the oil can back. Where do you need oil? asked Dorothy. Do my neck first, said the Tin Man. Ah, uh, now do my arms. As soon as his arms were free, the Tin Man lowered his axe and leaned it against a tree. I've been holding that axe for more than a year. Do my legs, he continued. Dorothy and the Scarecrow did as they were asked. The Tin Man gave a cry of joy. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome, said Dorothy. You're lucky we were on our way to see Oz, a great wizard, or we wouldn't have heard you. Why are you going to see Oz? He asked. I want to go back to Kansas, and the Scarecrow wants a brain rather than straw in his head, she replied. The Tin Man thought for a moment and asked, Do you think Oz would give me a heart? Maybe, answered Dorothy. Hearts are probably as easy as brains for the Wizard of Oz. May I join you? asked the Tin Man. Yes, come along said the Scarecrow. Yes, agreed Dorothy. So the Tin Man shouldered his axe, and they all followed the yellow brick road. Soon, Dorothy was bored because there was nothing much to see on the long journey. So she asked, Who made you, Tin Man? Scarecrow was made by a farmer. Were you made by a woodcutter? No, I was a woodcutter's son, said the Tin Man. How did you become a Tin Man? She asked. It's a love story with a curse by the Wicked Witch of the East, he replied. Please tell us, said Dorothy. The Tin Man was quiet for a moment and then began. I fell in love with a beautiful girl and I asked her to marry me. What did she say? asked Dorothy. She said she would marry me when I had enough money to buy a house, the Tin Man replied. Her stepmother was a lazy woman. She wanted her stepdaughter to stay with her and do all the housework, so she asked the Wicked Witch to prevent the marriage. What happened? asked Dorothy. The witch enchanted my axe, said the Tin Man. One day when I was working, the axe cut off my leg. I went to a tinsmith, and he made me a leg. I went back to work again, and the axe slipped. I had lost my other leg. But my love made me strong. The tinsmith made me another leg, and I went back to work. The next time the axe slipped, I lost both my arms. Oh no! exclaimed Dorothy. Thanks to my love and the tinsmith, I was soon back at work, continued the tin man. This angered the witch, so the next time the axe took my head. I thought that was the end, but the tinsmith made me a head and I went back to work. When the axe struck again, 
I was cut in two. The tinsmith made a body out of tin, but the body had no heart. Without a heart, I had lost my love for the beautiful girl. That is why I want one. Dorothy was very moved by the story, but she was also worried. There was very little bread left in her basket. The Wonderful Wizard of Oz Chapter 4 The Cowardly Lion When will we be out of this forest? Dorothy asked the Tin Man. Oh, I don't know, he replied. But we are safe. I have my axe and my oil can. Nothing but fire can hurt the scarecrow, and you have the kiss of the good witch on your forehead. Who will protect Toto? asked Dorothy nervously. Suddenly, a lion jumped onto the road and made a terrible roar. With one blow of his paw, the lion sent the scarecrow spinning, and with another blow, he struck the tin man down. Toto barked and rushed toward the lion. The lion opened his mouth, and Dorothy was frightened for Toto. She slapped the lion on his nose as hard as she could. Don't you dare bite Toto, screamed Dorothy. You should be ashamed. A big lion like you biting a little dog. I didn't bite him, said the lion. No, but you tried to, said Dorothy. You're nothing but a big coward. Yes, said the lion, hanging his head in shame. I can't help it. I've always been a coward. Why are you a coward? asked Dorothy, looking at the great beast in surprise. He was as big as a small horse. I don't know, he replied. I guess I was born this way. I've never had to fight. I've only had to roar. That's not right, said the scarecrow. A lion should be brave. Yes, said the lion, wiping a tear from his eye with his tail. But whenever there is danger, I get scared. You just need some courage, said the tin man. Yes, said the lion tearfully. I need courage. You should come with us, said Dorothy. We're going to see the wizard, added the tin man. The wizard? asked the lion. Yes, the Wizard of Oz, explained Dorothy. I want to go home. The Scarecrow wants a brain, the Tin Man wants a heart, and you need courage. Yes, courage, said the lion. I want to ask for courage. They camped under a large tree near a small stream. Dorothy and Toto ate the last of their bread. Take these said the Scarecrow, giving Dorothy a handful of nuts. If squirrels can eat them, then so can you. Oh, thank you, said Dorothy. After breakfast, they set off. While walking, they heard strange noises. They immediately began to run. Did you hear that? asked Dorothy. They are the Kalitas, said the Lion. What are the Kalitas? asked Dorothy. They are monsters with bodies like bears and heads like tigers, replied the lion. I'm very afraid of them. Dorothy and the others reached a cliff with a river far below. Oh no, screamed Dorothy. We're trapped. What will we do now? Here is a tall tree, said the scarecrow thoughtfully. With Tin Man's help, we could make a bridge. Excellent idea, said the lion. Tin Man cut down the tree so it formed a bridge across the river. As the group began to cross, they heard a sharp growl. They all turned to look and saw two Kalitas running toward them. Quick, cried the lion. He roared at the Kalitas while his friends made it across the bridge. 
The Kalitas stopped, but then rushed forward again. My roar didn't work! cried the lion. They're still coming! Tin Man, start chopping the bridge! said the scarecrow. Yes! said Dorothy. And hurry! Right away, the Tin Man swung his axe at the bridge. The bridge soon collapsed, carrying the ugly beasts with it into the river below. You were so brave! Dorothy said to the lion. No, I was so scared, said the lion. Anyway, we made it, said Dorothy, relieved. Yes, and look, said the Tin Man. We're almost out of the forest. To the Emerald City, said Dorothy. Little Fox <laughs>